Hello and welcome everybody. Today I would like to share my experience ruining my life with self-improvement, personal development, and um, it's not an exaggeration, it's not an overstatement, the title is not clickbait, it's something I actually did. I took, I guess, the idea of improving myself and I dove down that rabbit hole so intensely over the course of seven or eight years that eventually I kind of burned my life down to nothing. I purified my relationships and my life to the point where I was just so incredibly isolated. And I examined myself and worked on myself to the point of neurotic over-analysis. And at some point, and it didn't happen overnight, it happened um, you know, after losing a friend who was on a, a similar trajectory to me, a similar path. Um, and after yeah, just a few experiences, there was a year probably where I slowly started to realize that I had devoted just copious amounts of energy and attention and, and time and effort into healing myself or fixing myself and my life had progressively become more lonely bleak empty and i myself became more neurotic and i my confidence just like slowly eroded and my sense of just accepting myself and being okay being alive in this world it was like it really really disintegrated to the point where I didn't have people. I didn't have, a, like, my sense, like, I, I was neurotically overanalyzing everything in a way that was not healthy or productive. And I had kind of starved myself of many of the things that make a human mentally well relationship, connection, work, um, material stability. Uh, there's all of these kind of pillars of life, just fun, fr like just taking it easy and enjoying things, being creative. I had deprived myself of these things. And I th there was this, uh, looking back, it's almost like I was holding myself hostage. And when I had fixed myself, when I had healed, then I could start living again. Then I would do things that were fun or interesting, or I would have friends again. I would have relationships again. I would, have, I would give myself just the basic building blocks that make life on this difficult planet bearable. <laughs> and I just, I just like, it was like, yeah, I'll just forego those for now. But I did that for long enough and I, I, I think instead of backing down, I just got more intense. It was like, well, I guess I have to get rid of those friends. I, be, I won't talk to my family. I won't talk to these people because I'm trying to like really heal here. I'm trying to purify myself and improve myself. And, and these tendencies of mine to get triggered, to be uh, self-absorbed or... Um, insecure, afraid, just regress into these fearful, weaker patterns. Um, I've got to, yeah, just like strip my life bare, clean it out completely so that I can change this and heal it. Now, the motivation to be a better person is not, not a bad motivation. I think it's a very healthy thing that a lot of us um, benefit from. And certainly I have benefited from it. Um, but I took it to such an extreme that I think it was creating like new wounds, so to speak. You know, I was, I guess I was like, in my head, I was trying to heal like my emotional wounds from my childhood or whatever, but I was doing something in such an imbalanced way, in such an overzealous way that it was creating a new problem that it took a very long time for me to recognize and kind of humbly accept 
And I had to learn how to laugh at myself and how to be like, yeah, okay, I did that. I have a tendency to like take things to extremes. And I did it with trying to heal myself. It was somewhat hilarious and absurd that I would uh, try to heal myself so much that I would kind of almost destroy my life and my mental health and my like, <laughs> that I would tear myself away from everyone and everything and have my kind of self-confidence and belief in myself and basic ability to walk through this world shrivel 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 down into something so microscopic um yeah it, it took me a while to recognize that and to be able to stop taking everything so seriously and stop holding myself hostage and start being like, man, you have to start experiencing some life. You have to start giving yourself that because you're withering away and it's not, it's not leading where you thought it would. Yeah, and I suppose I just got so caught up in this idea that I kind of just was a problem to fix that I stopped just like breathing and letting myself be and letting myself live. And I think it's really important to have a balance of like self-acceptance and discipline and change and growth. Um, yeah, they're, they're balancing influences maybe. And I kind of dropped the ball. I dropped one of them. <laughs> And for the last few years, I've, you know, been slowly, steadily kind of turning back towards life, turning back towards connection, friendship, accepting myself, accepting people, family, becoming more stable materially. And it's been a very, very beautiful and sometimes humbling humiliating, embarrassing process. It's what my, I wrote a book recently and it kind of, it's a collection of stories that happen during this process of like turning back towards life. And even though I, I don't describe it this way, it's almost like a period of recovering from that over analysis of just trying, to, seeing myself as a problem to fix. Um, I learned so much during that chapter of my life that I can't just simply regret it. Um, I don't even know that I do regret it because I ex like there's a self-awareness that came out of it. There's really, really precious. It's a beautiful thing. And now there's this gratitude because I tore myself away from people and connections and uh, stability and so many things I tore myself away from now that I now stepping back into them it's like I have this heightened gratitude and sensitivity to appreciate them it's like man just sitting down with somebody and having an honest conversation where we're so different but we can find something so deep that's in common with us that's such a beautiful thing or um there's just many examples of simple things that when you go without them for so long, I can really feel the magic of them when I experience them again, even in small doses. Anyhow, like come on the other side of that, if there's like two lessons that I've learned, one of them is if you have a mindset, a philosophy, or a path that you're walking down in life, and it makes you feel increasingly separate from humanity, if it makes you feel just more and more isolated from and at odds with people, you might, it might not be the best path. It might not. <laughs> For me, that's not an ideal path. It's a warning sign. It's a red flag that like, hey, what's up here? This is suspicious because there are other paths where you learn to see, even as an incredibly different type of person, you learn to see the common humanity in really different people. And, and that's actually like a harder art 
to master. It's not as easy to find the common thread, the thing that unites us, that universal heartbeat that runs through everybody. Um, I think that paths that lead us into that, that don't make our walls get stronger and thicker, but um, they actually make us feel more connected to life and and more accepting of ourselves and others in all of our complexity and messiness and foolishness, that to me seems like a funner time. It's just my own bias though. It took me a long time to learn that. And it can be maybe fun for a while to see some to see ourselves as really separate from others, to see ourselves as better than others. But the longer you walk down that path, the lonelier it gets. And I suppose the next lesson that, I, that comes to mind that I learned from this experience is more internal. And it's really kind of just the inner um, corollary to what I just said, is that a path that makes, a, for me, going down a path of trying to fix myself, the more I did that, the more that part of my mind grew. The more I was fixing myself, the more problems I found to fix myself because I was just like giving strength and energy to that part of my psyche. And eventually I just realized, hey, there's always going to be an infinite list of complaints that I can find with myself. And I got to figure out a way to not just like feed this monster inside of me that just, it just gets more hungry for problems and things to be ashamed of the more I feed it energy. And there's something incredibly beautiful about being humble, about working on ourselves, about being able to admit when we're wrong. And I have to do that like all the time because I've, I've got a big mouth, I've got strong emotions and I make mistakes often. But I, I need to understand the monsters in me and not feed them too much and kind of keep it in balance and, under, and yeah, keep it in check, be reasonable. And being around people who can keep me in check is really helpful because they can say, Miles, why are you beating yourself up about that, man? It's nothing. And uh, sometimes uh, I'm not capable of having that level of groundedness. So yeah, I guess the lesson that I'm sharing that's just on my mind today is, that is twofold. It's like a path that makes me feel increasingly isolated from others might be problematic and then a path that makes me feel increasingly at odds with myself is kind of very similarly uh troublesome and at the same time i i uh i live a pretty unique life and so there is a sense of being different but when i can feel that and honor that and see the common threads of humanity in the people around me, I just feel so much happier in life. And when I can see the mistakes I make all of the time and learn to laugh about them, not in a cynical or sarcastic way, but in a way where I can also take accountability for them without feeling like I have to go curl up in a ball and like <laughs> just um, be paralyzed by my shame and embarrassment um life is a lot better too because then when i make a mistake i have the ability to not be paralyzed but to accept responsibility and go up to somebody and apologize to them and say hey guess what i think i was an ass right there and i think i don't want to be that towards you you didn't deserve that i respect you and please understand that sometimes i'm just overtaken by emotion um and I don't want to be, but that happens, and I'm sorry. Not being paraly paralyzed by my shame, not castigating myself, it actually seems to make me more capable of noticing things 
that I could improve upon and actually taking like creative action towards that. Uh, it's very interesting. But even though I can say with sincerity that I kind of like, you know, burned my life to the ground um, under the guise or pretense of self-improvement, I also feel that that was not time wasted, that there, many, there were many, many gifts that I, uh, that I was blessed with during that journey. The last few years where I've been turning in a different direction, I kind of pivoted. I wrote a book about that. So far, the response I've gotten from strangers who have read it is really positive and really encouraging, really supportive, very grateful for that response. To anybody who has reached out, thank you. And if you're interested in checking out that book, it is called 10 Lessons in Love. It's a collection of honest personal stories. I think of them as love stories, but unconventional love stories. Um, yeah, there's stories about loss and loneliness and failure, rejection, finding love in surprising places. Um, yeah, unconventional love stories. And if you're interested in checking it out, there will be a link in the description or in the show notes. And that's all I've got to share today. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, let me know. If you've had your own experiences, I'd love to hear. And um, yeah, until next time, I hope that you have a beautiful day.